Southern California quakes hit the West Coast. Los Angeles over 800 quakes. Coso volcanic field over 8,600. Long Valley caldera super volcano over 700. The geysers at Clear Lake over 1,000. So this whole area, especially Southern California, is being hit by a flurry of quakes. And there are people that are asking, is the big one coming? The U.S. West Coast on the Ring of Fire, over a subduction zone, one of the most dangerous in the world. It also has the Long Valley Caldera supervolcano with geysers, fumaroles. This is it here, one aspect of it. It also has to the south the Casa Volcanic Field, as we can see here, with the USGS listed as a moderate threat, whereas the Long Valley Caldera supervolcano, it listed as a very high threat. And as we can see here recently, the magma plume has been found to be right under Ridgecrest, sweeping up towards Long Valley Caldera, also connecting Yellowstone. This is a recent geological evidence, and it shows that this magma body is connected. And that perhaps that's why the Ridgecrest earthquake that took place 20 years ago, that was also big, it was strong, it was 7.1 magnitude, gave an earthquake swarm to Yellowstone a couple of weeks after that. Now concerning what we have here, we have a tremendous amount of quakes going uh, taking place in the Los Angeles area, the southern part of the San Andreas. It seems that they have had an uptick of activity since the July 4th magnitude 6.4 earthquake in Ridgecrest, the coastal volcanic field area, and the July 5th, the 7.1 magnitude, very strong earthquake that lasted about 12 seconds. It also caused blackout for a few hours and gas lines were ruptured and fires had uh, broken out because of that. Thank goodness we had no casualties. It was an area that was not heavily populated, but besides that, it was because of the 6.4 the day prior that gave the people the chance to be alert for a bigger earthquake. And uh, it was in the evening, about uh, 8.20 in the evening, and people were out and about, and obviously that helped mitigate things. But the geologists did announce that the Ridgecrest quake had nothing to do with lessening the chances of the big one that was expected to hit the southern portion of the San Andreas, a portion that has been very uh, lacking in major earthquakes. They have been predicting the big one to be hitting there. And that's one aspect of the San Andreas that has had an earthquake drought, from what they called. But we also have the northern area of the Cascades, the uh, area around Portland that is expecting a major earthquake that happens there every 300 years and we're overdue there. An earthquake that had created a tsunami in the 1700s. The geologists found that that area also has, on an average, every 300 years, a devastating major earthquake. And we also have the middle part, the more middle portion of the San Andreas, that also is lacking a major earthquake. So, does all this earthquake activity that we're seeing especially the past few days around the Los Angeles area, means something. Because of the fact that California has been hit by more than 3,000 quakes in the past week, and there's been rice speculation that the big one will soon be shaking that whole area, Los Angeles has a 31% chance of seeing a magnitude 7.5 earthquake in the next 30 years, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. This is according to Kaisha Langton, Express UK. 
Californians are waiting for the big one quake since 1906. That's when San Francisco experienced an estimated magnitude 7.9 earthquake along the San Andreas Fault, and it devastated the city. So is the big one really coming? According to Earthquake Track, California has experienced 55 earthquakes in the last 24 hours, 440 earthquakes in the past seven days, while 2,650 plus earthquakes were recorded in the past month in California and 18,000 in the past 365 days. I think that those numbers are grossly understated. Well, we know that, for example, since the Ridgecrest Earth Day, we've had over 60,000 earthquakes. We're not counting the ones that are over two and a half magnitude, but everyone, even the micros, uh, micro quakes. Now, the largest quake recorded recently was 3.1 Ridgecrest, and uh, this was the same location as the 7.1 earthquake that hit on July 6th. But we've also seen that it's been heading west towards the Garlic Fault. We've also seen that the Ridgecrest quake has knocked around the San Andreas and that we've seen an uptick in activity there. And all around, as we saw, Los Angeles. Over 815 quakes in the past month. Uh, so we've seen a, a tremendous uptick in activity there. The 7.1 Ridgecrest lasted only 12 seconds, but it was felt by about 30 million people, with more than 6,000 people losing power. As we know, California is, of course, prone to, earthquake, prone to earthquakes because it's on the subduction zone where the Pacific Plate is lodging itself underneath the North American Plate. So we have these tectonic plates activating that whole area. And the point where these two plates meet, grind one against one another, and it's known as the, this is what's creating the San Andreas fault line. And the fault is where many predict that the big one will strike. The U.S. Geological Survey groups earthquakes on a magnitude scale from minor to great. The evaluation scale is this. Great means magnitude eight or more. Major is what we had in Ridgecrest. Major is magnitude 7 to 7.9. Strong is magnitude 6 to 6.9. Moderate is magnitude 5 to 5.9. Light is magnitude 4 to 4.9. And minor is magnitude 3 to 3.9. Now, most earthquakes on record do not meet the USGS classification of strong. The big one is a hypothetical magnitude eight or higher earthquake which is sought to strike California every few hundred years. Eight, so that would be a great, great earthquake. In 1906, California came close to the big one when a magnitude 7.9 event destroyed much of San Francisco. All right, 7.9, uh, what can you say? Major to great. Um, now, the devastating fires broke out in the city after the quake, and uh, they lasted for several days, as we know. Uh, and as a result, there were casualties. Now, if another or larger quake were to strike California, there would be a devastation, loss of life. Also, the fact that we have a tremendous increase of population, but also the Building codes, have to, the, the uh, construction has changed greatly in that we have a lot of high-rise buildings in these areas. And they are not, from what the engineers and geologists tell us, they are not uh, worthy. They cannot stand a magnitude 7 quake because of the fact that they're not strong enough. Magnitude 7 being a major quake. A lot of the owners of these buildings have not retrofitted them to stand a major quake, which means that they will not be able to withstand a major earthquake. 
Now, there's no way to chart or predict if a big event will occur again, but according to the USGS, parts of the fault line may appear overdue for major earthquake, meaning over 7 magnitude. The USGS said that the paleoseismic data on different parts of the San Andreas fault zone are all telling us that some sections appear to be past the average or overdue for a significant earthquake. But the data cannot be used to make predictions, so we don't understand earthquakes well enough to know exactly where the next earthquake will occur, what the magnitude will be, or exactly when that will happen. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.